Hey folks, we're about ready to get real serious on a new project that involves the Yugo. Something we've never done on this channel before, so you're going to want to stay tuned. Push start it. Junior got it running. How's the brakes feel? Anything? Actually, Sun brakes. Yeah, don't don't be squeezed on the on the brake pedal. No, they bought the car knowing full well that it had a broken brake line, so we just didn't want to mess with it too much. But uh, we couldn't get started on the jump pack, thinking maybe the starter was stuck or something. But anyways. There is the new power plant. I believe these are a 1.5 and it is variable valve timing. I think they got like 110 horsepower. So that's like double the horsepower of what the Yugo has. But the other thing is, it's got a more common bolt pattern for the wheels. The five-speed manual transmission in this engine are absolutely bulletproof. And we're gonna try and use everything that we can to make it work, including the struts, Rack and pinion steering, and uh, let's check and see what options this thing has, if any. Crank windows, no air conditioner, and it's only got 247,000 kilometers on it. That is kilometers, guys, not miles. So uh, I'll put on the screen what that is in miles. Horn works. Basic fly speed manual, and we'll utilize everything that we can out of this car. What's that, hon? How much did you pay for it? Well, that depends. What's an acceptable amount of money for it? 50 bucks. <laughs> Times 10. 500 bucks. <laughs> However, it may have been 500 bucks, but it all, it's got four good winter tires on it. And the tire, he gave me the wheels and tires, the summer ones. But in the back of the truck, what so I'll be able to sell those. What are you? Okay. Right? All right. Okay. I'll well, just put them on the buy and sell. Problem is, is it's probably old gas and it's got water in it. I'm sitting. So we've got the car unloaded. It's now in the shop and it is the next day. So one of the things before we jump into this video that I want to explain is that yes, this is going to be a swap donor car for the Yugo, which means we've got to check this thing out to see what we're going to be able to use and what we're not going to be able to use in order to make the swap. Two things right off the uh, get-go that we're going to have to look at is one, uh, this car has no brakes currently, uh, very little brakes. Uh, but the second thing is, it doesn't start on its own with the starter. You got to, we've tried beating on the starter. It will jump start. Uh, so I think there's something wrong there. We're going to try and figure that out as well. Uh, probably not in this video, but nevertheless, this video is an introduction to the 2005 Toyota Echo. So we're gonna get this thing up in the air, we're gonna check it all over, see what parts are usable, and then we'll get it down and get it over to my shop and get it next to the Yugo. And we can compare some of the stats between these two cars to why I made the decision on one of these things and why I want this to be the owner car. Let's get this thing up in the air and check it out. So this is a 2005 Toyota Echo. It's a base car. It's a five-speed manual, no air conditioning, crank windows, hubcaps, and I paid 500 bucks for it. But already, I think I'm in the money. Why? Well, it's got four winter tires on it that are in really good shape. It also came with four all-season tires on rims. Also, this car still has the factory catalytic converter. 
So just in wheels and tires alone and the catalytic converter, I've made my 500 bucks back. You see, honey, there is money to be made in buying used vehicles and project cars. So this vehicle was up for sale on the buy and sell. Uh, the inspection is expired and it needs a little bit of work. Uh, the bumper is taped together with some duct tape because he hit a deer. Uh, the front fender is uh, just kind of hanging in the wind. The uh, rockers in the back here are starting to show some signs of age. In fact, when I put it up on the hoist here, she crunched up pretty good. However, the rest of the car seems like it's in pretty decent shape. And other than this little hole in the trunk, well, everything else is going to be usable on this car. We've got a complete rear suspension. If we're going to use it, we can use it. Everything's there. It looks like it's got brand new drums. And uh, one of the things that we do have to fix is this brake line up here that uh, at some point somebody used some JB Weld to fix that up. But because we're not going to be driving this car, we're actually just going to pinch off the brake line. And that way we just don't have to worry about it. Not a big deal. The exhaust system on this car probably won't be usable on the Yugo. The muffler looks like it's been replaced not that long ago. It does have a broken mount here, so everything's just kind of floating. Uh, but you come clear up to here, and this is where they replace the exhaust at some point in time. It does have some hole on the floors, and in some places it looks like it's actually about to uh, kind of rust through. Where we're concerned about is this whole entire front section. We've got the control arms, the subframe, which is a little bit scaly, but I think it's solid and we'll be able to clean it up. CV boots are good, tie rods are good, ball joints are good, everything is good that way, even the sway bar links. So we'll be able to make use of everything. Now this car has 247,000 kilometers on it, like I showed you before. So the mileage isn't terrible for a Toyota. And as we come over here, we do have a little bit of seepage coming out of the uh, oil pan. No big deal. We can replace the oil pan on this thing. Other than that, there are no leaks. Now, you'll see right here, there is a little bit of leaking coming there. That's brake fluid from where I topped up the reservoir, and it just kind of dripped down on everything. What I'm hoping to do with this thing is I'm hoping to be able to reuse the entire strut system uh, so that when I go to order parts to make this thing work better, is once I get the, the uh, struts fabbed, I can put new ones in there or coilovers or whatever we're going to use for this Toyota Yaris. The fact that these wheels are 4-bolt as well and they are 4x100 and not 4x98 makes it a lot easier to find some different styles to fit the Yugo. Now, granted, you guys are going to say, well, gee, you just put those 4x98 wheels on the Yugo. Uh, didn't you have plans to do this from the beginning? Yeah, I did. But I was hoping that I was going to be able to get the drive of the Yugo a little bit longer. Uh, and I wanted to kind of do it in a little bit, you know, in style. So by the time we get this thing all tore apart, we might have a little bit of good weather here. But the plan is, is to attack the Toyota Yaris first, get it stripped down, and get all the pieces that we need out of it. And get it set aside so that we can go and we can start working on the Yugo and just kind of see where we're going to have to make some modifications. Obviously, we're going to pull the engine, transmission, all that out of it and see what we can use from the Echo. I've probably been calling it a Yaris, but see what we can use from the Echo and uh, see what modifications we're going to have to do because I'm sure that there's going to be plenty. I'm not afraid of that part of this swap. What I'm afraid of is... The whole tuning aspect. I don't think we'll have any problem getting this thing to start. It's getting it uh, tuned up. Uh, we do have plans on putting a turbo on this at some point in time and finding somebody in my area to do that is going to be tough. I may have to go out of town uh, to do that which means likely hauling the car the Yugo uh, out of town. Anyways let's uh, bring this down. We're gonna get that brake line fixed and uh, then we can go under the hood and show you what we've got under there. So there's the starter. And she looks pretty rusty. 
And that's your slave cylinder beside it. It looks pretty rusty too. It doesn't look like it's terrible to get off. So let's, uh, I'm gonna get this thing off and we'll see, uh, see what the problem is. All right, well, we finally got the starter out after a little bit of struggling. It was uh, rusted in there pretty good. Uh, but just as we anticipated when we turned it with the key, the gear was popping out, but the starter itself wasn't turning. We tried jumping it here on the bench and same thing. So I think we're gonna have to put a starter in it. So our net zero car is now gonna cost us a starter. So I guess we gotta start selling some parts off this thing to pay for a starter. What we're gonna be doing next is we're gonna get this thing over to my shop. We'll get it and the Yugo inside. We'll take some comparisons. So stay right there and uh, we'll meet you over the garage. All right, guys, I know you don't care about any of that crap. You just wanna to get to the nitty gritty and all the details on this Yugo Toyota Echo Swap. Now, there's been some controversy per se in TikTok and Instagram and Facebook and all these places about naming the project. And I just casually threw out Toyugo. And I got a few messages from some guys who seem to think that the Yugoda is a better brand uh, or a better name for the project. So go down right now in that comment section, let me know. Do you like Toyugo or do you like Yugoda? better for this project. Anyways, uh, what this video is about is it's basically an introduction to the project. Uh, you've seen that we went and got the Echo uh, and that we've got it unloaded off the trailer and we had it into the garage, checked it all over. We've already replaced the starter and right now it's actually running bad. I think the gas is bad or it's got water. This vehicle's been sitting uh, for quite some time, but uh, we'll get to the bottom of that in a future video, but right now, we wanna take a look at the comparison between the 1987 Yugo GV uh, and the 2005 Toyota Echo. And uh, just compare the two, look at some of the dimensions, look at some of the specs on these cars and uh, see where we're actually gonna gain in uh, doing all this work. So without further ado, let's get over to the cars and uh, take a look. So before we get started on this project, one of the things that uh, we need to go over are the specs. So I'm gonna flash the specs up here on the screen so you can take a look at the weight, the uh, horsepower and torque on the 87 Yugo. And as well over here, we will list the specs on the weight, horsepower and torque specs on the Toyota. Now, as you can tell by that, uh, those numbers they're actually very very close so some people might think well why would you want to go through all the trouble of switching the engine from this over to the engine on this well it's actually quite simple this car is going to run a heck of a lot more efficient than this car because we actually have almost literally double the horsepower in its stock form on the one nz engine coming out of the echo we're going to double the horsepower on the yugo and that's the whole plan is we want to get a fun little rocket ship on the yugo to make things work so the plan is basically to do the engine swap whatever suspension components that we can salvage from this over to that and make the car run and drive once we get that done we're going to take a look at adding some forced induction. And I'm thinking probably turbo is going to be the cheapest way to go. Um, but by doing that, we're going to set a goal here of tripling the factory horsepower of the Yugo. So we're going to try and go from 55 horsepower all the way up to 165. And that means we're going to have to get to a dyno. Uh, we're going to, have to pull some runs, get some tuning on it, which I have no clue what I'm doing when it comes to tuning. So I'm going to have to have some help with that. If you're watching this video right now and you haven't done so yet, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Also hit that subscribe button because I believe based on your reactions that this whole thing is going to be a big thing on YouTube. If you know anybody who knows anything about tuning on Toyota with whatever device that we're going to have to get, I'm thinking probably a Haltech of some sort, 
Um, I'm gonna have to have somebody who knows how to use it. Give me a shout, hit me up on Instagram, DM me, uh, and see if we can't get together. If you're in Eastern Canada or Eastern US, that would be great. Uh, the borders are starting to open up and things are starting to happen with less and less, and less restrictions all the time. So hopefully that we can do some traveling uh, to get some work done on this. Let's pop the hood on these two. We're gonna take some measurements and I'm gonna show you why I chose the Echo to do the swap on the Yugo. Okay, so the biggest reason why I chose this 1NZ was because a buddy of mine told me to do so. Seriously, that's the only reason why I looked at this engine. And he's a big Toyota guy and he said, look, if you're gonna swap anything, go reliable. And these engines you could turbo with very little modification. So thank you, Dustin, who you can follow his journey on Instagram. I'll put that up here somewhere. Uh, but let's take a look at the reasons why this is such a perfect uh, donor car or donor engine for the Yugo. One of the big things about this platform on the Echoes and Yaris is the short distance from the header panel of the radiator to the firewall. And if we go and we put that right up against the firewall, we come out to here, we're about two feet right to the edge of the header panel. And if we go over and measure from the front of the motor to where the transmission starts to dip down, we're basically looking at about uh, 30 inches, maybe 28 and a half actually, uh, inches from the front of the motor to the transmission part where it kind of dips down under the frame rail. So one thing I do want you to notice on this car is how the firewall kind of starts right here and then kind of goes back up in here for the spare tire space, uh, the air box, and your wiper motor over here. But we still need to start measuring from here to see if the other motor is going to fit. So let's do that. So if I come back here and hold that right about where I think it's got to go and hold this out, two feet comes to about the middle of the radiator and we've got a little bit of room to spare. Uh, it actually comes out to probably closer to 26 inches to the edge of the header here. So we've got plenty of room this way, which actually was my biggest concern. Where I think we're going to run into trouble is the brake booster takes up a lot of that space uh, over here and it sticks out. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it sticks out right to here. So that's where the 30 inches of space between this frame rail and that frame rail and where the transmission starts to dip, we need to make sure that that transmission dips far enough below that brake booster, because if it doesn't, then we're into some fabricating a brake booster or going with manual brakes, which is not optimal. So let's take a measurement, which I think if we go right about there, over to that brake booster is about 26 inches, and probably right over to the edge of the battery here is about 30 inches. There's plenty of room width-wise for that engine to fit in here, but like I said, that brake booster might be the Achilles heel to this whole thing. So there's plenty of room up in that cavity that we might be able to do something with the brake booster, meaning if we remove it from this position, we might be able to put it up in there, fabricate a bracket and spin it around and still have our brake lever uh, come out and uh, push on that master cylinder somehow. So. We'll figure that out when we get there, but I feel pretty confident that that motor is going to fit in this car. So I'm pretty excited to get started on this project, and I think the very first thing that we've got to do uh, before we can really move anywhere is we're going to have to get the Yugo engine and transmission and all the drivetrain components out to see what we're going to be able to do. I think also that with a few quick measurements that I took, we may end up having to use and reuse the suspension on the front of the Yugo based on size and geometry. I don't think, at a, at a quick glance, I don't think we're gonna be able to use this, uh, but we'll get there. We'll figure it all out. We'll know what we can and can't use. Uh, once we get this motor out and set aside and everything stripped out from underneath, uh, then we can kind of come over to this one do the same thing, get that motor and trans yanked out of there and see what it is we're gonna be able to use. One thing that I didn't show you was the actual track of the front wheels. Now, 
there's five inches difference between the Echo and the Yugo that the Yugo is a little bit narrower. So uh, when we get the axles in place, uh, that might be somewhere that we have to compromise is either narrowing the axles to make sure that everything fits in here. Because if we go five inches bigger, that's two and a half inches on each side of the car that we've got to compensate for somewhere. It could work in our favor. It could give us that better stance out front, uh, which means we may have to end up putting some uh, fender flares or working something out around this area. But nevertheless, I'm, I've accepted the challenge. And I again, I got to thank my buddy Dustin for A, talking me into purchasing the Yugo. Uh, I've got to thank my wife for B, letting me buy uh, the Yugo. And even though I tried to hide this one from her, it didn't work. Um, is she upset? Well, I mean, she gets over it, but uh, the fact that I just kind of failed to mention it, I guess, was the big thing. But um, you guys know what it's all about. You're, you're car guys. You watch my channel because you're a car guy. You watch other car guy channels. And, uh, you know, there's a passion there that some people just don't get, whether it's your spouse, your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your best friend, whatever, that if you're not a car guy, you're just not going to get it. And with this particular project, I've been looking for something that's going to grow my channel. At first, I thought it was going to be uh, just vlogging about the used car dealership. Well, most of you just didn't think that was very interesting. Um, I had the Chrysler Cordoba. I've had that for a long time. We've done some work on that. And you guys watched those videos, but uh, nothing went viral. Nothing blew up. I bought Dale the truck. A lot of you guys love Dale the truck. Um, and the views got better. And by mistake, I bought Grandma, featured it on the channel. And you guys loved Grandma and Blackjack. And you love those videos. Um, but I felt that I needed something that was just going to push the limits and push my skill and uh, my abilities. And I bought the Yugo. Y'all love the Yugo. And ever since I've been posting about doing the swap with the Echo, you guys have been going crazy. So look, be sure to share this video out. Tell all your friends, tell anybody who cares uh, that we're taking something that was named the worst car ever built and we're taking components and the, the heart of something that is likely the most reliable vehicles on the planet. And we're going to combine the two and make a 80s Yugoslavian POS into something that everybody is going to want to drive. And guess what? If you ever see me somewhere, I'm going to invite you to drive it because I know you're going to have fun and it's going to be something to write home about. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. There's not a lot of information here, but I think it's interesting and I can't wait to tear into it. Um, so one thing I do want to kind of set you up for is the fact that this isn't something that's going to happen immediately. I still have a garage to finish. Uh, I've still got some work to do in the yard uh, when, when the good weather comes. Uh, we spend a lot, an awful lot of time camping uh, in the summertime, so uh, we've got lots to do, uh, but we'll get her done. So stay tuned for more Yugoda, Toyugo, whatever you guys decide. Don't forget, go down in the comment section and let me know which one you prefer, and we'll, we'll dub this project uh, at whatever the majority of you guys think it should be. Thank you so much for staying tuned to Old Car Guy. I'm so excited to be doing this project and having you guys come along with me for the ride. I wanna say this with all my heart, that I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys watching and sharing my videos. Look, stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. I love you guys, God bless. Let's get at it, do some work.